here to the blue area of the moon. An area that, for some reason, you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the Phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. Hello and welcome to yet another Comic Pow video review. This time around, I thought it would make a great bookend if I took a look at um, Avengers vs. X-Men Consequences number 5 and all new X-Men number 1. Um, basically, we have um, Kieran Gillen handing over his reign of the um, X-Men to um, Brian Michael Bendis, um, who up until now has been writing Avengers and new Avengers. So I thought that these two books would go really well as a good... Um, you know, compare and contrast together. Avengers vs. X-Men, uh, Consequences number 5, um, just like all the other ones, um, has had a different artist for each issue. So this issue, it's um, Gabriel Hernandez Walta. Um, he does a great job on the art in this issue. Um, consistently good. I think there was only one issue, um, I can't remember if it was the first or second one, that I, I didn't like all of the art on, but the art on this one is really great. Um, this one is basically tying up all the final loose ends from Avengers vs. X-Men. Um, overall, a great event, handled really well. Not too many um, random extra um, um, issues to read and miniseries and stuff like that. So good job on that, Marvel. Um, so basically, um, the main focus of this issue is um, Scott Summers breaking out of jail. Now, um, in the last issue, we saw him finally tell uh, Magic that it was time for him to go. And um, so now Magneto, Magic, and um, and Danger um, decide to go and spring him from jail. They seem to be his uh, main crew now. Um, this um, issue also um, ties up the story with Hope that's been going on. So basically, um, it seems by the end of this issue... Like, Hope might be involved in Cable's um, new book, Cable and X-Force. Um, but it's not 100% sure. Like, the way that they write the ending, it could go either way. But we'll get there uh, momentarily. But, um, you know, she's been, basically, she was the main focus of the X-Men for the past few years with Generation Hope. Uh, before that, Messiah Complex. She was the main character of Avengers X-Men. So it's kind of putting a nice little end to her story. Um, at least her main story. Until, like I said, they may continue her in Cable vs. X-Men. I mean, Cable and the uh, and X-Force. Sorry, Cable and X-Force. So basically, her story is just her trying to find Cable, like she mentioned a couple issues ago. I guess um, the best thing about this book is that um, Cyclops has finally gotten over his martyr complex. And <clears throat> he wants to basically out Magneto Magneto. Um, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, for now, Magneto is following him. We'll see if they end up having a power struggle in the future. But um, Magneto has followed um, Scott for quite a few years now, so um, it could be something they're comfortable with. On um, Comic Vine, they spoke of um, how Magneto and Xavier was o was always like a Martin Luther Malcolm X type of comparison, but um, it really seems like they're they're while it was an apt uh, comparison in the past, it seems really like um, Scott Summers is really taking the Malcolm X role um, going forward uh, with this issue. The other interesting thing is that um, he seems to be a little more vindictive than he was in the past, um, allowing um, Danger to scar the warden who was uh, making a profit off of um, keeping mutants in jails. Um, I would really hope that leads to him um, taking issue with the um, the new Hellfire Club with the kids who are building Sentinels and marketing Sentinels who kind of kicked off Schism, which um, set up a lot of the uh, um, sides for um, Avengers vs. X-Men. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he lets that stand. Um, we do know that... Um, even though directly out of this book we go into all new X Men, we do know that uh, we also am gonna, are going to get another Uncanny X Men, which is going to have um, Cyclops in it. So uh, we'll see what he does in that book going forward. 
Yeah. Oh, you know, plot-wise, it's a pretty, it's a pretty simple book, pretty easy book. This guy gets broken out of jail. He decides that he's gonna form a new, uh, more militant X-Men, and uh, Hope and Cable finally reunite. And Cable tells Hope, "Hey, you don't have to look out for me. I'm your dad. I look out for you. Don't worry about it." And um, at the end, they, it's a great, you know, um, a great teaser for, "Hey, here's Marvel now. Here's what's coming up." And it tells you about the Uncanny Avengers, Wolverine, and the X-Men, all new X-Men, and Cable and X-Force. So it's kind of like see what happened to all the characters in this epilogue. So I think Marvel sets it up perfectly. Their marketing takes care of everything well. Um, it's been a great story by Karen Gillan. Um, I haven't always thought his stories were, you know, five out of five, but I have really, really enjoyed. I think his stories have always been at least a four out of five, if if not, you know, four and a half out of five stars. Um, while he was doing his run on the X Men, he's done a really great job, and I think that the series as a whole um, should get a five out of five. Um, even though I didn't give all the issues within it a five, I think that. As a narrative structure, it works really well. Um, this issue itself is a good example of, of, you know, basically not an amazing issue like the other ones were. Um, I'd say this issue by itself is four out of five stars, but I think if you take the entire Avengers vs. X-Men consequences together, it should be a five out of five. It really, um, like I said, like I've been saying throughout all of these um, reviews, um, really um, takes what Kieran's been doing uh, with Scott, what Scott has been set up to do ever since uh, Delhi Genesis. Ever since Delhi Genesis, they've been kind of setting this up, especially with, you know, after M Day and everything. So I think it works really well. <clears throat> so, um, all new X Men, um, number one. Very, very interesting number one issue. Um, it, it turns out that the, is- that the, um, the preview um, images that we've seen on the internet are actually take place pretty late in this issue, which is great. I thought they took place right at the beginning, but no, this this book actually leads directly from the end of Avengers X-Men Consequences number five. Um, Scott and his team are um, going around the world and they're, they're saving um, different new mutants who are coming up. Um, I'm not super well-versed with the um, stories from the 60s uh, of the X-Men. So I don't know if there are any parallels to the way Magneto recruited people for his uh, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Um, And in fact, contrary to the way Scott's being painted by pretty much everybody, I don't really see what he's doing as evil. Um, Again, you know, it seems to be the whole, you know, Malcolm X more direct route versus the... um, the Martin Luther King Jr. route, but he's not killing humans. He is directly attacking humans who are attacking mutants. Um, but you could probably see a lot of sympathy. I mean, there was sympathy for, you know, a Malcolm X's point of view that, that, you know, hey, if people are beating me up, you know, maybe instead of turning the other cheek, I need to show them that, you know, we do have some power. So there's some pretty interesting, you know, dynamics. And it's pretty, I'll, I'll be interested to see if, um, Brian Bendis can kind of play that up a little bit rather than just, oh, he's the next Magneto, he's a bad guy. Um, he is helping people. He is helping these um, these um, new mutants. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I think it's it's pretty interesting and a good setup. Um, this, the issue actually begins with um, uh, st- the news that, that uh, Beast is going through yet another transformation. So he already went through one transformation when he became blue. Uh, under uh, Joss Whedon's um, writing in um, Astonishing X-Men, he went through another transformation where he kind of looked like a cat. So it looks like he's going through yet one more transformation. But uh, as this book says, he thinks it's going to kill him. So that sets up some interesting tension and kind of gives him motivation for what he's doing, that he's going back through time. Um, in general, you kind of have to forget the whole... Um, Marvel Universe rules of time travel uh, in order for this um, series that Bendis is writing to work but that's okay Um, you know I say just roll with it and just say look comics are always going to have some retcons always going to have some weird things going on by the very nature of the fact that they're continuing stories and in order to keep things fresh you kind of have to ignore some of the hard and fast rules you set you don't want to do that too much because then you drive um, people away but you do want to kind of um do it a little bit. Make sure that that there's um, some ability to to you know explore and do new things. 
So just ignore the fact that they said before, if you ever go to the past or future, you go to a different past or different future, not the one that actually is related to your timeline. And don't worry about it. Just enjoy the story. Um, I think that um, Brian Bendis sets up some really interesting um, dynamics between um, how he's going to write the original X-Men um, on how he's writing um, the present day X-Men. And um, I have to say, I was really prepared to to knock this book to that the, the premise sounded hokey. You know, we're bringing the old X-Men back and that's how we get Jean Grey. And I don't know, it just seemed really weird, but um, I'm actually really, really looking forward to it. And I'm really happy that at least for their first round of Marvel Now issues, they're double shipping, meaning there'll be another issue in two weeks instead of within a month. Um, I also uh, want to applaud Marvel for um, taking a whole page at the end of this um, issue to uh, introduce their um, artistic team, the writer and the artists, and just get people to know, hey, these are the guys writing these books. Yeah, Marvel owns these characters, but these are the guys bringing the story to you, and I think that's really great. And um, they also give you a good checklist. Hey, if you like the X-Men, here's all the X-Men books coming out this month. Here's um, some books to check out. Um, this particular issue... Um, I think I'd give it um, four to five stars. Um, it's not amazing, didn't blow me out of the water, but um, it is a really good, really well-written book. Um, Brian seems to really be taking the um, characters um, in a, into the next evolution, you know, as, uh, Hank and, and what he's doing. And uh, he seems to really have an interesting take with the show's both reverence, but also being a fresh take on the old X-Men. So um, I'll be really curious to see how number two is. All right. Um, just leave any comments um, on YouTube, Comic Vine, or Comic Pal, wherever you happen to see this video. Thanks.